Hello. Hello. Today we will explore an experience with ketamine and um, some ideas on what I think is going on. And I figure I'll play music this time to set the mood. Um, I don't know how I feel about it yet, but I'm going to try it. So, we'll get started in a second. Um, let's see. Hmm, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, pit um, on the screen, I'm going to pit some of the stuff I'm going to read. The way we can do this is um, chat, you can, if anything seems interesting to you or you have ideas, uh, say things in the chat and uh, I'm going to go through like, uh, go through a reading of uh, some of the experience stuff with Kedemy. And, um, yeah. So here we go. I'm gonna put this up. The Spotless Mind. So this is from the past, just to clarify. Um, I think it was probably, probably a year ago. Okay. Recently, m my mind has been plagued with ruminations of negative experiences. In previous weeks, life has actually been quite well. Certain blog posts did well. I was meeting with interesting people to discuss possible collaborations, and coaching has been insightful. On the other hand, certain negative experiences left me with repeating distractions. The timeline of valence was like a roller coaster. First, many good things happened in a short period of time, then everything settled down and a few bad interpersonal experiences occurred. This combination created a tendency to seek stimulation and reward via social media, which became a distraction from my other goals. It was as if I've replaced the large dose of stimulation that comes with a new blog post with casual, casual social media use as if to keep the ball rolling. This led me to consider ketamine as a way to dim diminish my clinginess to conditioned responses. I am prescribed the ketamine for depression, just to clarify. I was looking into the work of Ravi K. Das, who studies ketamine as a way to diminish reconsolidation of addiction-related memory processes. So I set out to test this idea and possibly recover and avoid any potential depressive episode that may be looming. Before consuming the ketamine, I journaled about the particular experiences that my mind was obsessed with, and even attempted to retrace the feelings I experienced uh, when I, uh, that, that I do experience when I'm compelled to addictively use social media. The hope was to reduce the strong urgency that guides both my ruminations and my social media use. So, before we get into the experience, I'm going to check if chat is out there. I don't know. Hello, if you are out there. Let's continue. Okay, so the first song that played was actually based on this experience. Um, normally it would be linked right here, but I have it on a special setting. This experience was particularly insane. It began with sensations of euphoria that came and went. It seemed to depend on whether I attended to such senses or not. This had me wondering if ketamine euphoria highly depends on whether or not you are focusing on the sensation or ignoring it. Then I realized how this ties into my recent exploration of attention and dissociation. A quick recap on what I suspect dissociatives may do. So this is from another post called Attention and Attention is the Mechanism of Dissociation. 
Dissociative drugs are popularly known to induce dissociative effects. One stranger effect that isn't often talked about is immersion. Initially, immersion would seem like something that opposes dissociation, though consider that immersion in this in these cases might be about dropping attention for other stimuli. In the same way that dissociatives allow us to stop feeling our body or sometimes lose touch with external reality, more partial effects may occur at lower doses, such as detachment from normally distracting stimuli. This sort of effect may actually underlie the sort of dream states that, that are described in K-hole experiences. Consider how very surprising loud noises suddenly draw our attention and force us to immerse into the stimuli while dissociating from whatever we are doing, what we were doing. Surprising and relatively loud stimuli are highly salient. Surprising and relatively quiet noises do not usually have such an effect. At least this seems to be the case. Dissociative drugs may reduce the intensity of stimuli and make it so that loud stimuli are quieter. These drugs are known, known to induce numbness of the body at higher doses and are even used on people during surgery because of these body numbing qualities. This numbing may could be generalized to both internal and external stimuli so that everything is quieter in a sense to such a degree that immersing into a television show or your imagination becomes easier. This may result in being so immersed into television shows that you forget that you are even watching a screen and begin to believe that your observations are ones of reality. The K-hole dream states are somewhat like how closing your eyes can allow us... I'm going to rephrase this well. K-hole dream states are somewhat like how closing our eyes can allow us to immerse into our imagination, potentially because we are no longer distracted by such loud external perceptions. Okay, back to the experience. I decided to stop trying to focus my attention on my senses. Usually I did focus on my senses, particularly by star staring at the black behind my blindfold as a way to hopefully observe hallucinations. But this time, I allowed my senses to leave my mind. This was ultimately the right choice. While this dose was only 80 milligrams, I suspect my strategy to utilize attention with intention factored in how, into how this trip escalated. This strategy is almost the opposite of performing body scans, in which a person focuses on the on the sensations on their on the sensations on their body from head to toe. Instead, I rejected attendance to any sensation that popped up in my conscious experience by directing my attention elsewhere, usually towards thoughts or imaginations. At this point, I willingly slipped deeper and deeper into what could only be described as, a, as the K-hole. I left my body and existed only as some sentient shape. This shape did not conform to boring and ordinary geometry that had a complexity. It was like a ball that had a tail that curled out into the ethereal space. I still felt aware of myself, but my body was arbitrary. The realm around me was non-representational, cloudy, black, gray, purple, and had touches of red. My sentient place was golden colored. The music I listened to had elements of scratching and bubbling water, which took on a visual synesthetic feeling. The songs guided my interpretation of reality. So there is a Spotify playlist I made for this trip. And uh, that is the one that I was listening to, which cannot be played here because of copyright and because people want to have authoritarian control over what I'm allowed to show you on stream. So I apologize on behalf of uh, the Twitch police 
and all of the artists that want to stop you from uh, having the full experience because they need to survive in this capitalistic world. Anyways, so I'm going to check chat real quick and see what's going on. See if anyone else is out there. If you're out there, please say hello. I will say hello back and engage you. Okay. A state of detachment peaked. The sense that life or sentience is valuable faded. This may have shifted my views on how people approach being alive or wanting to die. I suspect this perspective was the kind that informed various Buddhist ideas. Life seems to have such endless potential, and so much of this was squashed by our urgency to protect our status quo. We cling on as if this is all we have, and we have already reached our peak existence. Death didn't matter. Life didn't matter. But my interests and curiosity somehow did. I wondered how far I could push to the limits of knowledge, but not book knowledge, instead something deeper, like experiential knowledge. I wanted to observe the limits of my mind, my perception, and to know what it even meant to exist at all. I lay blindfolded during midday. Light leaked through the blindfold. I allowed myself to interpret this without the constraints of my knowledge of the situation. I decided to not attend what I knew so that I could better see what else reality could look like. Rooms began to form from the leaking light behind my blindfold. Corners were born. Vague objects like presences floated around, though never fully becoming objects. The time of day seemed to change based on the music that played. It would switch between night and a kind of daylight with blue light coming through non-representational windows. There were elements of egoism that wouldn't normally appeal to me. It felt as if I could allow myself to be driven towards selfish manipulation of my reality. It isn't that I would harm others, but it felt as if I backed away from giving up power to others. This might actually be important for me to apply in my daily life. My sense of low independence may be connected to this. Materialism felt hollow, and my interest in understanding what I am came to the center. There were so many ways to process reality that I had not allowed myself due to my addiction to human culture. So now we come to the results section. I'm gonna check out if Chad is doing anything again. Okay. My goal was to diminish the effects of certain cues on eliciting conditioned responses as a way to become less addicted to social media and less obsessed with the ruminations that my mind attached to. While this didn't exactly work as I had hoped, there were other interesting effects. There was an observed strong reduction in depression, an induction of a hypomanic state, and possible changes to the way I think, which seemed to stem from the particular thoughts during the experience. The reduction in depression was strong enough that I became hyperactive and mildly hypomanic. I started sleeping less, oftentimes waking up at 1 or 2 a.m. and staying up for an hour or two and then falling back asleep. I felt an intense curiosity about what life would be like if I had started to chase selfish desires. This actually concerned me. This effect has since faded, luckily. This likely came about from pondering about the pursuit of selfish desires during the trip. The hypomania is mostly seized by about four or five days after the ketamine consumption. The main intention of altering conditioned responses seemed to fade, though there were changes in my response to the cues I set out to manipulate with ketamine. It is hard to say, but it appeared that my responses were more flexible 
but potentially in the opposite direction than I intended. This makes me wonder if it was it is the induced plasticity of the post ketamine post acute ketamine use. This might work in either direction, overriding the responses to cues or enhancing them, depending on whether you feed the addiction or avoid it. It's unclear. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, that is all that I have there. Um, so I'm curious if any of you are out there, what you think about this whole setup. I don't know, it's kind of transforming the blog posts into uh, something auditory, but also there's music, and um, some of you might have been there in the last stream. The last stream uh, chatters kind of like fed me some ideas to which it became a kind of back and forth. Um, and that kind of, that's kind of what I want. I think that that has the potential to become something really valuable because then I get to extract and mine new ideas from you. <laughs> um, and that's what I want. But I also am like creating video content for whoever out there might want it. Um, yeah. So I guess um, what I could do right now. I could show you some EEG things. I don't know if I should do that. Mm, I think I should keep the video kind of short and clean for now. So I'm going to uh, probably just end the stream here. Uh, let me know what you think about this format and uh, the experience and if you have similar experiences. What do you think? Um, and uh, if you want access to the music, uh, it's uh, it's under the artist name Gage, which is G A E J. And uh, like if you search, um, I might just drop a link. I don't know how searchable it is. So uh, yeah, and. Um, I guess I should plug the Patreon. Um, if you'd like to join the Patreon, there is like, uh, if you're interested in a particularly ketamine, there's some, I did some EEG things with ketamine and kind of like experimented with seeing uh, other things like if a strobe light can entrain my brain waves. And, uh, stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, I will leave, uh, it's probably not on Twitch, unfortunately, but, uh, once this is on YouTube and you're watching it, it'll probably be in the description. So, yeah. Hope y'all have a good day, and, uh, goodbye. <laughs>